Suspension on gravel bikes is a bit pointless, isn't it? Or is it? To help me find out, in this video, I've assembled two bikes to do some timed testing. This is a brand new Giant Revolt X with a suspension fork and a suspension seat post. While over here is my specialized Crux with no suspension at all. But which is faster when it comes to riding on a set course? Well, today we will find out and also find out more subjectively, which is better when it comes to ride quality, handling, and the confidence a bike gives you when riding off-road. Now, I do know that many of you will have a strong opinion on this topic already, and be letting me know by leaving a comment down below, and that's fine. But I genuinely have an open mind to new technology if it can enhance my experience of riding bikes or make me faster, because I need all the help I can get these days but I have no agenda here. I'm not being paid to promote suspension and neither bike brand is sponsoring this video because this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a new website this summer, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it really quick and easy. And good news, you don't need to be tech savvy at all. Squarespace does all the hard work for you, so no coding needed. There's a wide selection of templates to choose from and they're easy to customize with a drag and drop interface it really couldn't be any easier. And there's around the clock support as well. And Squarespace offers tons of features. Build an online photo gallery, start blogging, build an online shop to sell your cool bike products, share social media photos, and much, much more. So if you like the sound of that, you get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase right now by using my special code and link down below in the description. Right, let's start with the crux and set a benchmark time on this bike. In three, two, one, go. So I picked the rocky descent to start with. And we'll see how we get on with the rigid gravel bike first. And straight away, it's quite rough. A lot of feedback coming through the handlebars and through the pedals. It's quite tricky to see what you're riding on in this dappled light. Quite rocky down here. Lots of branches, big boulders. Hit the rim then. There's a little track up to the left here. A bit of single track. It just feels rough and bumpy. Sort of as you'd expect really. And back onto the rough gravel. I'm going as fast as I dare go, ready? Oh, safety first, of course. Try and pick a smoother line. That's it. Not the, the roughest or the most technical descent in the world, but a good enough length to get a feel of how the bikes compare, hopefully. Now I've got a short road climb up to the next gravel section. So while I get my head down, get the power down, let's talk about these two bikes and the differences a bit more. Now, aside from the obvious difference of the suspension on a Revolt, there is a big difference on the scales. That crux over there is 7.5 kilograms, which is lighter than many road bikes. And that is insane. All thanks to a frame that weighs 725 grams, which is just bonkers. The Crux is of course originally a CX cyclocross race bike, but the new version has been modified and moved into a gravel space. With space for wide tires, up to 47, modified geometry, so better away from the CX circuit, and some other cool details as well. This Revolt X, meanwhile, is 9.7 kilograms. Both weighed without pedals and both essentially the same size, but there are differences in specification and wheels and so on. So not quite a absolutely like for like comparison, but the two bikes I have available. The Crux really is an incredible bike because here on the road, even with 40 mil wide tires, that low weight and the geometry means it feels really good. And look at that, 40k an hour. So it's definitely no slouch. And now for the final gravel sector. Mostly flat and quite a fast this section. Thankfully dried out 
They're nice and dusty. Now get a hammer down. The crux feels good on this gravel track. It's not too bumpy. Run the tyres quite low. There's still quite a lot of feedback through the main contact points. It's definitely not a, a magic carpet experience. You know you're riding off-road, but there is a question to be asked about how much comfort do you want from a bike like this? Because if it's maximum comfort you seek, a full suspension mountain bike is going to offer way more comfort and smoothness. And there we are, seven kilometers. Right, bike swap, get a revolt out and repeat. Righty ho, time for lap two on a giant with suspension. So let's crack on in three, two, one, and go. So a giant should be much quicker down here. Got a suspension fork and a drop of seat post. And straight away it feels faster, much more planted, more stable. There's not much feedback through the handlebars and the pedals. Feels so much quicker. Up in the sink track. Oh, it feels amazing. I feel like I can take much more liberty with line choice and not worry about picking a smooth line choice as much as the crux. Whoa! The giant felt insane down that rough track. Just much smoother. I was in more control and having more fun. But now, a bit of road section. So I'm get my head down and crack on. And let me give you a closer look at his new Revolt X. So this is the Revolt X and one of the few gravel bikes available right now designed around a suspension fork. So we have a RockShot Rudy delivering 40 millimeters of travel up front and the head tube is shorter and a geometry modified to account for the suspension fork. Because if you put the fork on my crux, say, it's gonna raise the front and slacken the head angle, where Giant had considered that as part of the design process of this new bike. And then we have a combined dropper and suspension seat post, which is fairly novel. Normally you get either a suspension seat post or a dropper not combined in the same unit. The RockShop rear suspension can be adjusted for body weight with an air spring on the left side of the fork and there's a lockout lever on the front here as well. So on the road, you can lock it out and off road, you can open it up. Or you can do as I do and leave it open all the time because you're not really losing much on the road unless you're really sprinting. And who really sprints a gravel bike unless you're racing? On the road, the giant does feel a bit more sluggish. You feel extra weight. Doesn't feel quite as uh, willing to get out of speed. But we'll find out later. We'll see what the clock says which is faster. Feels faster than a mountain bike, that's for sure. And it feels way better than a 90s mountain bike. All right, so back off road. Open up the suspension, mustn't forget. A handlebar dial would be quite useful for that. And let's get the power down. And straight away, you can feel the suspension through the seat post and the forks and the handlebar. It's just so much smoother and calmer. It may feel slow, but I think that might be psychological. I'm able to focus on getting the power out, really focus on pedaling as hard as I can, not being bounced around so much. The giant just feels so much more at home, off-road. So smooth, it's amazing what a difference it makes. Yeah, now it feels really fast. It feels good. Clearly what this bike is designed for. I'll take the same line over on the left as I did with the crux. Even here though, it feels so much smoother. Oh my goodness me, so hot, so sweaty after two runs. So I need a cold shower, go home, do that, and then dive into the results and my observations and findings from riding both of bikes and some quite interesting differences. So I can't wait to uh, 
dive into that. Okay, the results are in and time to crunch some numbers. And the headline news is that the specialized crux behind me was an entire one minute faster than a giant Revolt X over my seven kilometer course. So quite a clear margin of difference between the two bikes. The lighter bike was faster than the bike with suspension. But diving into more detail of the data shows some interesting comparisons and insights. My route, as you remember, started with a rocky descent measuring about 500 meters, so not super long. But here, the Revolt was eight seconds faster than the Crux. It definitely felt faster, and the stopwatch shows it was indeed faster. And if you extended that distance or went down some really rough and rocky trails, I think the Revolt X would pull out an even bigger lead than the Crux. It definitely felt faster and smoother, and I was in more control and had more confidence to carry more speed. So quite a significant difference between the two bikes on that one section. But perhaps unsurprisingly, on the road section and the road climb of this route, the Crux pulled out a bigger lead. 23 seconds faster than the Revolt X, and an average speed of 32K an hour versus 30 for the Revolt. So both bikes actually quite fast on that road section, but the Crux was a bit faster. But then perhaps surprisingly, on the final gravel section, which are quite flat, flat to start with, and then dip down and a gentle drag back to the finish line, I thought the Revolt would be quicker because it felt smoother and therefore faster, but the Crux actually pulled out a lead here, completing that section of gravel 16 seconds faster than the Giant, and that really surprised me. So against the clock in my admittedly quite short test, the lighter weight gravel bike was faster than the bike with suspension. So is suspension a fad? Well, in this test, perhaps it's not absolutely needed, but away from the time differences, I felt more comfortable riding the Revolt on those rougher sections. On the flat gravel, there's more comfort and it felt smoother and I reckon I could ride that sort of trail all day in more comfort than the Crux, which definitely gave you lots of feedback through the contact point. And on that very rough section, and I know it's not the roughest in the world, the Revolt was head and shoulders better than the Crux. The suspension, fork, and the dropper seat post made a big difference down there. I had more confidence, I carried more speed, and it felt less dangerous and sketchy than the Crux. So it all comes down to the sort of riding you're doing. If you're doing road and smooth gravel, then the lighter weight option is clearly the way to go. But if you're trying to ride very rough sections of trail and you want extra speed and more control, then I think suspension definitely has a place. And the Revolt is a really interesting package because as I said earlier, it's actually designed around a suspension fork with geometry modified for that suspension. So I don't know if suspension is the future for all gravel bikes, but I do see a future where there are gravel bikes with suspension for those of us who might want it, and then more regular conventional bikes like this that don't have suspension. And that means everybody can be happy. Have suspension if you want it, or don't have it if you don't. Anyway, hopefully you found this video mildly interesting and entertaining, and if you've got any feedback, questions, put them down below in the comment section, as I'm sure you already have. And if you want to see a video comparing a gravel bike with knobby tires and slick tires as a road bike, then do watch the video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.